SpaceX is retiring landing zone one, but why? This is where they land Falcon 9 first stages, Falcon heavy boosters. Are they just gonna rely on the drone ships from now on? Well, no, but there's a bit more of a story behind why this historic site will no longer be at SpaceX's disposal. The plot of land for landing zone one was signed over to SpaceX from the US Air Force 45th Space Wing, as it was then known in February 2015, for what was at the time a five year lease. The concrete pad was then constructed later that year and first used for the historic Orbcom OG2 Mission 2, which saw Booster B1019 perform a world first propulsive landing of an orbital class booster flying to space and back. LZ1 was then followed by Landing Zone 2 in 2017, and there were also plans for a Landing Zone 3 for a triple RTLS Falcon Heavy, although those plans never materialized. Those two pads have since been used together nine times for nine recoverable Falcon Heavy missions, the most recent being Goes U last year. However, 10 years and 53 landings later, SpaceX is having to give the land back to what is now known as the US Space Force Space Launch Delta 45. That plot of land leased to SpaceX is actually technically known as Launch Complex 13, and back in the 50s, 60s and 70s was host to a number of suborbital Atlas ICBM tests and orbital Atlas Agena launches. A couple of years ago in 2023, the Space Force actually assigned Launch Complex 13 to two new companies, Phantom Space and Via Space, founded in 2019 and 2017 respectively. They'll be sharing the facility to build their own launch pads, returning the site to a launch complex for the first time in 50 years. However, I think it's fair to say that neither of these companies look like they'll be launching something anytime soon. The last news update from Phantom Space on their website was over one year ago, and via Space's Wikipedia article is so short that the references have more lines than the article itself. I'm not kidding. Phantom Space are currently working on their 20 meter tall Daytona rocket, named as such because founder Jim Cantrell is also a fan of motor racing. It's set to be capable of lofting over 600 kilos into low Earth orbit, powered by 10 Carolox Hadley engines from Ursa Major, nine on the first stage and one on the second, similar in configuration to Rocket Lab's Electron. They don't appear to be advertising when their first launch will occur, although 2026 and 2027 have both been bouncing around on various internet sources. Via Space is currently working on a similar class vehicle called Dauntless. The two-stage launch vehicle is set to stand at 22 meters in height, powered by a hybrid combination of solid high-density polyethylene as the fuel and liquid oxygen as the oxidizer, with a current estimate of over 500 kilos to LEO. They have got this proton-looking thing going on though, so I'll give them points for that one. Their website is currently claiming a 2027 date for their first launch. So as it stands, neither of these companies are close to needing a launch pad. So why are the Space Force not renewing SpaceX's lease? Well, that's because of a new policy at the Space Coast. Space Launch Delta 45 are phasing out separate launch and landing pads and going forward, all new landing pads have to be built in the same complex from where the rocket launched. For example, a Falcon 9 launching from Space Launch Complex 40, the world's busiest launch pad, will have to return to a landing pad at Slick 40 when conducting an RTLS recovery. This new policy has been introduced as a way to try and reduce the disturbances to other launch operators at the Cape because now we have so many different companies working there. Think Blue Origin, Stoke Space, Relativity, ULA, just to name a few. By returning to the place from which you launched, the range only has to close off an area around that one area, instead of having to close off the launch pad area, the landing pad area, etc. This will help to maximize the launch cadence from the eastern range. But even though we're saying goodbye to LZ-1, landing zone 2 isn't going anywhere for the time being. It's looking like that will be SpaceX's landing zone until the landing pads at Slick 40 and LC-39A are up and running. And don't worry if we don't see any action happening over the next few months. At the end of the day, these are just big round concrete slabs. Judging by their record at Roberts Road and Starbase, SpaceX could have a brand new landing zone up and running in an afternoon. I've been Ryan Caton for NSF, thanks for watching and goodbye.